Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith and we're in here at the welding table. Today we have a project that's going to be a little bit of welding, a little bit of machining, and to create an adjustment to the shape of, you got it, a porthole. Now, we're hoping to give you some do's and don'ts that you can stick into your porthole of tips and tricks and knowledge as well. Now, the customer procured this porthole. Of course, it's minus the glass and frame because we asked them to take that part so we're not responsible for it. All we need is the part we're working on. And sometimes all you see is the part that I'm working on in here and you don't get to see it mounted up or in, in, in finished or whatever. So we don't know if this customer will send us a finished picture or whatever of this when he's done, but that's besides the point. We're going to do the repair regardless. Now, He came to us and he had already put the hole in the door. He already realized that the door is thicker than this lip right here, the snout length of the porthole. And the backup ring doesn't come up and join over the outside of this, which it should. It should. It could have a little bit protruding or whatever, but it should dress off to where that ring is over the face of that. But what he did is he put this in there and he basically said he needs this lengthen twice the thickness of this ring. So this is about 3 16 of an inch. I just figured 200, double that, that's 400. That's what we're going to lengthen this snout here. Now, I measured this and it's it's an oddball size there and we know that we're not going to we're not going to find an inexpensive piece that will match this that we can go ahead and and machine it and and solder it or uh it, Add this on there by machining another piece and adding it on. What we're going to do is, because we have this capability, and we have plenty of it, some silicon brazing rod or TIG rod, and we're going to take and we're going to TIG weld probably four passes, maybe five, hopefully four, right around the top of this and bring that material up, and then we'll take it into the lathe and we'll turn the OD and the ID and the face and then massage it in a little bit to blend it in trying not to do too much disruption to the matina and everything else on the other the rest of it there and uh and then he'll be able to install it into the door and then he can work the matina of the material itself he can splash some vinegar on it or whatever get some green whatever he wants to do with the things polish it bright whatever um so that's the name of the game all right so i'm going to set this up in the wall positioner here but real quick, I want to go ahead and give a shout out for James Green. James Green's been a big part of the YouTube community. And he's also, he's, he's been one of the big helps in the What's in Your Box Toolbox giveaway when I had that going on. And uh, I met him for the first time out at the Bar Z Summer Bash. Anyway, he's gone through some uh, moving around and he's uh, settled down now. And I guess about three months or so, he's, uh, he's had his uh, channel back up and running. And uh, it is Eagle Dust Off 37 Short Serious Shenanigans. All right, now I'm going to put the link up in my description. So you'll be able to click onto that and go to that channel and check him out. And he's got 500 and 566 subscribes right now, including mine. And I have them also listed on my feature page on my YouTube channel as well. All right. There you go, uh, James. I'm glad you're back up and running for sure. All right, let's uh, let's get on to our project here. All right, before we get going, I, I remember back a couple of questions in the comments on other videos here about my well positioner, and that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use it in this position. I have a foot pedal down on the floor, controls that. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pivot around here a little bit. i got to be careful on the cords. The cords are becoming fray here. About time to go ahead and re-put re new cords on here. Um, this is a, um, a Ronsom welding positioner. All right. And it was made uh, uh, Houston, Texas. All right. Good old American ingenuity. And, uh, you know, it's basically a worm and... and uh, part of a ring gear to 
<clears throat> create the tilt two bearings right here and a spur gear and a motor with a gearbox on here and you just got a little bit of controls as far as speed and direction here and a couple fuses right there and an idiot light to tell you that the power's on um the the other thing that's um real simple on here and that is just a spring-loaded plunger and a piece of pipe right here with a braided um ground strap and then that flat face just touches the back of that gear right there that's what it sounds like with no oil all right so that that little flat foot up here and i i put i put um anti-splatter lube there mig mig uh, nozzle lube on there and it works really good so that when you rotate this around it doesn't squeal at that point okay but i do keep this dry instead of putting lube on it and uh so it does it does tend to squeal or squeak a little bit when i'm letting it down but if i'm holding back pressure and i have no problem with it keeping it clear and clean and the only reason why I don't put lube in that position, sometimes I'm grinding or, or chipping and I just don't want it to stick into that gear uh, and, and become a bind on it. All right, so it's really just kind of a simple wall positioner. And when I got it, it only had the flat plate here, which is only some tube here, uh, tack welded to the back of a steel plate. And these are real rough um, holes that you can drop bolts into it. And slide the bolts over and use it as a simple uh, face plate. Okay, I took a four jaw chuck and I made a plug fit in the bottom here, and the plug lined up with the hole in the center of this. I transfer punch down in where these two holes right here in between the T nut slots here, drilled and tapped them so I could bolt the four jaw chuck on here. And uh, so I can use those and I can still slide in some T nut or, uh, you know fake tees you know just a flat flat bar with a 3 8 hole or whatever i can use them for toe clamping or whatever but i've been enjoying just having the four jaw with reversible jaws to grab outside or inside on various projects and i even run some pretty big shafting in here of course it's supported out there and all this is is just holding the end and spinning it and i got my shafting rollers and stuff like that all right that's just a quick overview on my wall positioner because it's it was in the comments and I wanted to just kind of refresh uh, that or add that information in there if somebody was interested in the wall positioner. Okay, I've kind of preset these jaws because I knew that I was going to be able to set it in there just about like that. Okay, and eyeballing it down in there, it looks like that one and that one all right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the this is a stainless steel wire wheel by the way um, so that I'm not putting any uh, rust rust type material into it. If you take a regular steel wire wheel, you can embed steel particles into the surface of, of the material and it will become rust. Okay, inside and outside, that looks really nice and clean. And that the the color of this casting here um, really looks like it's the kind of bronze that is uh, TIG friendly. And I'm really hoping it's not going to be a lot of fuming on here. If it is a fuming, it's going to be that first pass that's going to give us the headache. After we make that first pass around, the silicone bronze will lay on top of itself without any problems. Okay, I think we're all set. We got you under the welding hood. And I've got uh, gas and everything. I think I'm in the right position here. 
and uh, I'll see how we do here. Oh, this is going to be a really nice build. Okay, I just want to get a good look at it. Make sure I'm flowing in there right. I think I'm going to stand it up a little bit more. I'm seeing a little bit here. Got to kind of look at my overhang on the other side there. Getting about two inches before I have to move it, and, and you want to control the heat, you know, a little bit. And uh, looks like I'm staying pretty close to being on the top. Like anything else, you got you, you got to practice it a lot to be real comfortable with it. And you can see how it's flowing now compared to where it was when I was just starting. You can used to it. Okay, we're gonna start a second level here.
Okay, so after a couple minutes, we were able to get five passes on there, plus a couple areas we hit a, a, an extra one on there. And we've got two inches, 200 in a lot of places, and no less than two inches, 150, anywhere around the top here. Now we're taking our square on the side here, and we're looking at the gap here, and we're looking at our distance of, or clearance that we have up here, and we're making a judgment on the enough buildup on the outside, and we're going to be looking on the buildup on the inside. And as you can see, because of my patience and walling skills, we've got a little bit of variables that are in it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to tilt this thing down and I'm going to put a bead along the outside where I feel it needs to be and wash these into each other and the same on the inside. Now when you weld and every time you bring a pass around here you shrink, you shrink this in. Just like if you had a bearing race stuck in a bore you could take a weld bead and run it around on the inside of that race and you will shrink that race and you'll be able to turn it upside down and it'll fall out. Sometimes it's just a matter of uh, a little bit of rocking in there but you can pull that race out of there because the, the material is shrunk and weld on itself will shrink and even though you're welding against the face here it's still connected all the way around in a circle and when that cools down it draws in and shrinks so we're we're more concerned with what this is out on the outside because we know that more so than not the the beads are are have come inside and we can see that by folding a straight edge along here and most of most of this is in farther than the inside all right but we do know that by putting the square up here and seeing this clearance here and that clearance there that I'm you know this is a good example here because we're holding there and I've got about the width of the scale there but yet we have we have almost a hundred thousands right there we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit some of these areas right in here I'm not going to try to keep the camera or get it in here so close that I can't see what I'm going to do. And uh, I'm just, I'm just going to be filling and washing and we'll bring you in and show you the finished product when we're done. We let this uh, cool down overnight. We finished massaging or filling in, blending our inner weld laps and also around here. <clears throat> and we're getting ready to wire wheel this and then we're gonna take it into the other room so we can machine and fit our ring and all the surfaces that need to be. So we're just gonna go around and we're gonna wire wheel this.
Okay. Um, we just took so we hadn't took any of the firing or the glazing of anything that was on that surface off of there. And we clean this and this because we're going to dial this and dial this surface in on the lathe to create our true run to machine this too. This is an example of when I say it's better to be looking at it than looking for it. And that's because I really feel that I have put way more than enough on here to go ahead and give me a finished diameter to match this diameter. Instead of getting close to it and going, oh, I should have had more there. Um, so I'm pretty sure that I'm within this. And, and, and you know, it, it looks lumpy in some areas. But overall, I think I've got enough material where it needs to be. All right, finally down to the fun stuff. And, and that's creating a finished surface on our original part here. We're gonna we're gonna throw this in here on the four jaw. We've got these set roughly. We're gonna grab it on the ID like this. All right, now we're gonna take these one at a time, and I think I'll start with this one here. And we're slipping in an aluminum shim in here. Each, each jaw. Okay. We've got plenty of material on there. Let's go ahead and set this ring off to the side. We're going to indicate that face and that diameter. We're going to go ahead and put our indicator against the face here. We're going to check our run out on our face. I think I got inside that. All right, we're about 50 thousandths. Uh, we're heavy here, so we want to go ahead and see if we can pry this out here. And we're just going to try a simple screwdriver first here. We're on those aluminum, so it should eat, move pretty easy. Okay, 40 down to about 20 here. We're within about seven there now. That was the high. There's about the low. Let me just tweak it just a little bit. Kind of waves in there. Let's see. It was four point at uh, 38, 35, or 36, somewhere around 37. Okay, there's 40, 41. 40, 41, 38, 42, 38. Okay, four point, we're within about a thousandth there. That looks pretty good. All right, now let's see what we are on the OD here. Now, this is going to be hidden in the door when it mounts. So this would be less critical that this blends this in here, we might come in and indicate this so that we can get this to blend for visual. Because th when you open up the porthole and if you're staring in on this diameter here, that's what you're going to be looking at. Four pointing. We'll say that's uh, zero. 25 on that one. 18. About eight. All right, so we'll come out just a little bit on this one. A little bit on this one. We'll relax on that one. Relax on that one. Okay, four point. There's fifteen, fourteen. There's ten. And that's about 13 there. Four point, we're pretty darn close. It does have some highs and lows in there. 
All right, we're gonna we're gonna check in here. I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna go get our Noga mag base. We have a test indicator on there, but we're close enough. We might be able to use that in there. This is my Noga mag base. I haven't used it too much, but I have it set up with my Mitch Toyo test indicator here. And I've been keeping it in at the Rutland lathe because I, I think I'll probably use it more in there. Most of my stuff out here is bigger, and uh, but not that I can't go grab it when I want it. All right, so <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down in here, and we're going to twist this finger down a little bit, and we'll go ahead and we'll tighten the Noga right up there. All right, and I'm just rotating it around, and then we can adjust our finger down. Test indicator might actually be a little too sensitive for it, but uh, we have highs and lows. Just show them just like out here. Pretty good hollow right there. And then comes back up for the rest of it. Okay, we're going to have to run our other indicator in there just because we have so much uh, travel in our low-lying area. I'm just going to shoot this in across here because it's going to be a lot easier for me or you uh, to both read that indicator there. Right there is 20 and right there is 10. So we can make that within 5. Okay, there's minus five. Okay, even though you see a whipping like that, that's that's four pointed. Okay, let's recheck our face now. Pretty darn close right there. All right, let's spin this thing, see what we got. Okay, first we're set up here. We're gonna be taking a face cut here. And we take one more spin around here. And there's 100 there. Pretty close to 100 there. So we should be able to finish up pretty close to our 2 inch 100. That was the uh, ultimate goal to give us 400 on it. Alright, let's slow this down a little bit.
okay we're starting to pick up pretty good pretty good flat right in here all right now that uh that distance sticking out there is one two hundred okay we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take uh we're gonna go 25 at a time we just don't need to create any extra pressure to pull this thing out of here or tweak it Okay, and our last 25 here to bring it down to what we think is going to be 2 100. Okay, and we're right at two one hundred, and maybe a couple more. And we'll just double check that with. inches 114 113 and we do have a clean surface all the way around this is pretty narrow right in there all right now we're still we actually bank rolled ourselves a little bit into our planning because <clears throat> the customer told us twice the thickness of this and I just roughed it out at 200 and it's really one inch I mean 160 which would be uh, um, 300 and 20 320 and uh, we we shot for 400 so we we left ourselves at least uh, 80 thousands to play with just a little bit over a sixteenth of an inch looks like we're pretty darn close and that's why we were we were looking at what we what we needed to have up there to have a plus okay now let's go ahead and turn this slightly let's just come out and, and rough this OD down to size and then we'll switch over bring our inside boring bar and we'll hit the inside and we're roughing these all down and then we'll finish them off one at a time And we're taking 25 per side as, as, as well, or 25 on the depth. My scale is about 20 thousandths and it fit between that and the, uh, the OD there, so I took 25. Alright, we went and picked up our 6 to 7 Mitch Toyo mic here and uh, to 65 we're checking this in several places here 266 
263. If you measure out here too, actually we should be closer to the wall there. Uh, 250, one. 262, 269, 267. All right, now on top of our cut here that we've, we're at, two inches, uh, 89. Two inches eighty nine. Okay, we're just going to sneak up on it. We're going to take ten off of here. That so take twenty off the diameter. That's going to bring us down to within oh at least five to ten, depending on where what area you're in next to. That is barely, barely skipping. One little high spot that's jumping out. We measured that. Okay. One little spot right, right there. That's the high. Rest of it's clearing all the way around here. All right, how does our ring fit on here or does it yet? The ring is perfect. Okay. We can blend this in. And that's what this is. This is a piece of, this is artwork. This is not necessarily machining a machine fit. This is machining a visual item. This is uh, restoration of a, an item visually, not, not dimensionally. All right. <clears throat> All right, I'm happy with that. Let's uh, we'll switch out our bits. Let's go for the inside here. Okay, that's about 25 after the touch. Okay, holding the straight edge there. And it looks like we've got about another 40 thousandths to go <clears throat> per side. There's a lot more material on the inside. Like I was saying, the material shrinks <clears throat> and comes in. Okay, we're pretty darn close right there. And we're just going to feel, we're, we are still quite a bit high. As far as the touch going, dimensionally, okay, I want to come in here and I'm going to turn my bit a little bit so I have a little bit more rear clearance on there so I'm not going to be so square to it and I'm going to come in here
I'm just rotating this around by hand and I'm just barely coming out a little bit of each revolution. Okay, I just wanted to scratch it and I'm going to set zero right there. Remember, we're just blending this in so it looks, looks the part. Okay. All right. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and start it. We're going to come out here and we're going to touch it. And we'll know how much basically we have left on there. Okay. All right. I'm uh, 46 above my my zero mark. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take take it down to where we're within 20 thousandths of finish here. Okay, that that is almost a couple spots there. There's where we're touching, and that's almost blending in perfect there. But we're still, and there's a little touch right there. A little heavy, a little heavy. But this wall this brought this in, so this this actually as it fades in here, this will probably this is probably larger diameter down at the root here than it is out here because this has pulled it in, so it shrinks the tube as as well. So I mean, this is not the original diameter in here because this has pulled it in somewhat. All right, um, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and take it down to ten now. Ten, ten from that scrape. See, it's barely skipping as it's going in. But it's fading out pretty quick. Okay, now it's not touching. That, that is almost a little tiny bit raised right there. But that is almost blend it in 100% right there. But see, that's what I was saying. This brings it in, and even though we have run out and everything else, you saw that. We had highs, lows in here, but I averaged them out, four-jawed them. See, there's 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 a high, there's a high, there's a high. You can see there's a low. You know, that's where, that's where it's back here at the original line right here, okay? And that's where we said that was a bump. There's a bump out here. See, that's where it was touching out here. But we could, you know, we could feather that with, might be worth just a little, little tiny bit more cut. I'm not going to take, I'm going to, we'll go five, five now. Five from, five from the zero that we had touched off there. This may be our last cut right here.
Okay, almost faded out. Not quite to our spot there. And that is faded all the way out. Okay, that's the low area right there. And I bet you I could take I could take some emery paper. Emery paper here by hand. Okay, that's how close it was. <laughs> uh, we're there. Okay. We snuck right up on that. Here's the other area right there. And we can buff that out with a little emery too. Excellent. Okay, we're going to spin this and we're going to rub a little paper on it out. Um, let's see here. That looks pretty. A little tiny bit low right there, but that, that ring, that ring will probably cover that up. Anyway, that, that ring's going to be sitting there like this. Okay. We're going to go ahead and take, we can take another another 20 or so off of that and then kiss this chamfer inside and outside and that'll blend that in okay and we're taking 25 that'll leave us a little bit high from twice the thickness there compromise between what we actually we're able to get and what we actually needed and then we'll just break that tamper right there and come outside here and we'll break this one a little bit and then that one little light area there is going to look like hardly anything at all all right Okay, the first finishing tool is going to be just a, uh, a 40 grit uh, uh, flapper wheel here. We're just reaching in so that we can blend that whole surface all together. This is really the only surface that you'll actually see. And if it fades from the old Matina to the new, then they can blend that in as well. A little bit on the face here. All right. Now it looks like it looks the same all the way. In fact, that color match is even, that color match is like right on the money. Okay, now we're going to switch over, and I'm going to get a wire wheel, and I'm going to show you why a wire wheel really makes a difference. Okay, this is a little stainless steel wire wheel, and uh, we could use the cup wheel on our, on our grinder too, but uh, I just got the air hose in here, so we'll fire this up. It really kind of takes all those scratch marks out of there and puts back in that spun paper look. Almost like it was cast in there. Pretty close to the original. 
right in there, that old stuff right there. Okay, now you can bring this uh, Matina in here with, you know, a little vinegar or whatever, and you could you could get that to turn real fast. Even oils from your hands in a couple days, you can get that to turn and blend right in there. Nice. Okay, let's pull that out. <laughs> I like it. That 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 really does look looks good. Okay. Now when this is still old, he, he can wire wheel this and it's got it's got some darkening and it looks like ink or something was on there. Looks like it's laid around for a while. It is old. And we'll go ahead and we'll bring those two in there. Try not to lose our aluminum. Shims all at once here. Okay, got them all. There we go, our porthole. <laughs> all right. Customer, I'm sure, is going to be happy that this will fit in his door. This will be inside the door. This is what you'll see. And on the outside, you'll be able to put his glass. And uh, what's funny is the silicone rubber that was in here that he glued that O-ring in is still still in there. All right, he'll have to get that out and clean it out and do a little bit of prep on there. But uh, I'm sure he's going to be a happy camper. All right, until next time, get her done.